everybody. I'm Sean Robinson. And I'm Jasper Robinson. Welcome to Living the Line. Jasper, you and I have been talking about talking about these books for quite a while, huh? Um, two months ago? Three? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Uh, but we actually have a pretty good excuse to do it now. What just happened yesterday? Yesterday, the new, in, the all-new Dogman, Dogman the Scarlet Shredder came out. I really enjoyed this book. That's great. Now, you got this one uh, the day of release, right? Yeah. Straight ahead. Uh, it came out on March 19th. <laughs> the March 19th, yeah. It came out on March 19th? Mm -hmm. Okay. But you've been reading this uh, series for quite a while, right? Yeah, I've been reading this series for about a year and a year and a half. Yeah, and uh, do you remember how you heard about it in the first place? Uh, yes. Finn at school. I think it was your friend Finn, yeah. That's no, at, at school it was first. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, so you but heard... at school I read The Force Dog Man in French since okay. I'm at a French immersion. So what's the and title What's the title my, in French? Uh, Super Chien. And my friend Finn convinced me to read the books. And sure enough, now I'm reading them and they're just amazing. I ordered the first... <laughs> six books in a special box packet, which I might be able to show to you later. Okay. Yeah, and um, for people who haven't read the series, do you mind if I summarize real quick what, what it's about? Mm -hmm. So, uh, Dogman is a series by Dave Pilkey, who uh, is the artist and writer. Um, it's one of the biggest, I, I mean, I think the biggest book series of the past couple of years, not just comics. Uh, it actually represents an absurd amount of the uh, percentage of the comic market. And uh, the basic premise is uh, Dave Pilkey characters that he created, I think, when he was in elementary school. Uh, dog Man is a, uh, a policeman who has a dog, a special police dog, and the two of them are uh, bombed in uh, the first book and almost killed until Nurse Lady comes up with a great idea. And uh, she's like, why don't we... Oh, uh, at first... At first... Uh, the doctor's like, Sorry, doggy dude, but your body is dying. Boo hoo hoo, says the dog. And then, uh, the dog, and then the doctor says to, uh, the cop, uh, she says, You're Sorry, human, but your <coughs> head is dying. I always hated my darn head. So they, they get an operation, thanks to the nurse lady uh, and the doctor. And the nurse lady thinks of a wonderful idea, meaning, let's sew the dog's head on the cop's body. Right, and then a dog man acts like a dog, but has the body of a person. And, uh, you know, through the series of books, uh, you get a lot of... Rolling action. around in fish and stuff like that. Right. A action, adventure things, jokes. Uh, I would say, like, potty humor type stuff. Uh, but also, a really, really interesting arc for uh, most of the villains of the characters. So, for instance, like, do you remember who planted the bomb that kills uh, Greg, the policeman? Petey. And in this book... Oh, bah, 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 bah. oh. Yeah, P Petey the cat. Uh, they, they don't just let him go, and he doesn't just uh, be a villain. Uh, you know, he attempts to clone himself at one point and ends up having a father-like relationship with his young uh, clone, who uh, is Little Petey or Cat Kid. And uh, Little Petey uh, is actually the spinoff character in an entirely other series that we'll have to talk about at some point uh, called Cat Kid Comic Club, which is... Quite amazing. Uh, anyway, uh, you don't need to know all those things to enjoy uh, Dogman, but certainly I would say that it's a very satisfying arc throughout the series. So you really get to know the characters, uh, and they really get deeper and deeper and deeper. To know about the story. To know about the characters, too. So that has to be a satisfying thing. Yeah. Um, over the later books, like past the six, Petey starts just trying his best to be a good guy, and sure enough, he becomes. Yeah. 
he's able to kind of <clears throat> deal with the difficulties that he had. And uh, inside of that one where he gets out of jail and the governor pardons him, if you want to hear this one, it's a really good one too. Probably like one of my favorites actually. Dogman for whom the ball rolls. Yeah. So all those titles uh, have historic references in them, right? Like, uh, like for example, <clears throat> what I said, Scarlet Shredder. Ah, Scarlet Shredder. Oh. When I said the Scarlet Shredder. Scarlet. That's an L letter. <laughs> right. The Scarlet Letter. By the Scarlet name. Letter. Yeah. And there's also the third, Tale of Two Kitties, Six, For Whom the Ball Rolls, all that stuff. Tale of Two Kitties versus Tale of Two Cities, but there's many books based after it. Though the first, second, and fourth are not based after a name. The, my favorite one that they joked after was Dogman, Lord of the Fleas, instead of Lord of the Flies. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right, well, should we take a look at the book? So, Jasper, tell me about this book. Well, I love this book. It's a good book of, like, like it has a lot of humor. That's what I like. One of the things I like about it, it has a lot of humor and jokes, like, for example, singing hilarious songs and other stuff. Wait, Helen, should we sing this song? This is the nurse lady, who she's getting married to. Uh, the nurse, in this book, stuff happens hilarious. Someone gets married to Chief. The chief of town decides to marry a nurse. Here comes the bride, all dressed in white. Stepped on a turtle, and down came her girdle. Here comes the groom, all dressed in blue. Tripped on a rocking chair, and down came his underwear. Here comes the dodge, all dressed in black. Fell on a fancy rose, down came her pantyhose. <laughs> but stuff like that. Oh my goodness. They're heroes. The super buddies are here to save the day. Mecha Mountain Ninja Shark, the, the Firecracker Kid, and the Scarlet Shredder. Scarlet Shredder is also the name of the book, based after that character. So a family who f who is a normal family but fights but fights for freedom um, when things go wrong. Though this book also also has very 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 big, hilariously giant people. <coughs> yeah. Well, so is th that's not really Dog Man right there, is it? No, wonder what he is. Yeah, wonder well, what that will is. Will you tell me? <laughs> wonder what happened. But I mean, you, will you tell me about the the uh, the AI versions of the characters that are here? But when um uh, when Doctor Scum, the new the new bad guy in town, comes in and creates AI buddies, for example. When AI buddies come from a secretly evil monster, well, human, with a green face. Yeah, I actually wanted to read this part right here, if you don't mind. Yeah. Our robots are very personal. First, we do a 3D scan of her face. Then, we 3D print an exact replica. AI buddies look just like you, so they can work for you. This gives people more free time to do important stuff. My AI buddy, buddy goes to work, so I can do important stuff. Like what? Well, like playing games on my phone. <laughs> our AI buddies raised our kids. Well, look at the baby, cute baby crying. <laughs> so we can do important stuff. Like what? Like doom scrolling and duck clips. <laughs> click, click. My AI buddy drives my car, so I can do important stuff. Like what? Like taking selfies. Wee! <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, do you think that, uh, what did you think about this plot line? I thought it was a very interesting development, you know? I thought it was interesting, but it's like he's trying to make people's. 
lives turn into easier but make the world worse. Yeah. So doc, Dr. Scum um, is ruining the world, but people people s seem to think that it's about their lives being easy? Yeah, former bad guy. Actually, you can figure by later, he even made a replicate of his, himself. Of himself, yeah. I, I liked this part a lot. Uh, so Dr. Scum... Uh, his his uh, AI buddy has a flashback, right? And we see like the AI buddy's thoughts, and all of it is all uh, eight bitified. That was pretty cool, huh? It's, yeah. It's like funky looking. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know, just the people haven't seen this before. Um, this is a uh, normally this is called fliporama, uh, where they have an action sequence that's depicted here and here. It's called bliporama, eight bit bully, and this is the uh, bullying that the uh, AI buddy has experienced. And uh, you can see that it's like a little flip book that you do to get an action sequence going. But uh, all depicted in this like pseudo 8-bit uh, look for this page. <clears throat> what do you like about the flip Uh, I mean, I like how it animates. It's cool. I mean, it's kind of like they take a flip book, but they don't give it too much flip. I like it. Right. And uh, would you say that the attitude of this this book is pro cell phone or anti cell phone? What would you say? Pro cell phone meaning what? Like positive for cell phones. Like what? For positive meaning. <clears throat> Do you th you think what? Dave Pilkey thinks very highly of people who use cell phones all the time? Why not? Yeah. Uh, probably. <laughs> I mean, if they have so many watching games on my phone, doom scrolling, and all that, probably. But do they seem like positive depictions of those people? No. It's like their brains fell out of their heads or something? Yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't know, um, <clears throat> I don't know, this is the first Dogman that I remember that really has such a strong message like that. I only there's one in all of them. You think, you think each of the books has a message? Yeah, they're not all that strong, but, yeah. Also, I wanted to show you guys one more thing about the AI buddies. Is there a problem? Probably. Now go run the city. And go, ju go judge somebody. This is about the AI buddies. Well, we do important stuff. Like what? Like social media and watching cat videos. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is AI planning to dominate humanity? Someday? Wake up, sister. Look around you. Someone's pouring water over this guy's head and he doesn't pay attention because he's using his phone? Yep. Because <laughs> he's about to pour him a cup. About to get hit by a bus. A this is my favorite. This guy happily taking a selfie of himself as he's flying out the window in the burning building. And they forget to put up the trampoline. <laughs> and he's not using the hose. And they're just like taking selfies like while burning the fire. <laughs> We already have! <laughs> you know, J Jasper, uh, besides the strong message, and I think you're right, I think there's a, there's probably a moral message in most of the Dogman books, but this one, the, the anti-technology message, I'd say, I hadn't really seen real strongly in previous books. Um, but the, the one of the things I wanted to ask you about, it seemed like this book really gives you a good job of seeing like what happened to Petey to make himself the way that he is, right? Yeah. What what did what did you think about that? Like what what's <clears throat> he's the villain in the first couple books, right? Yeah. Like clearly the villain. But but here, what what was what was that scene like at the beginning with the with the mom and Petey? What did you think about that? I mean, it seemed like his it seemed like his mom was like trying to help him feel better, but, like, his dad was, like, evil and, like, trained him, kind of, to be evil. Yeah. But later in the book, he figures out that his mom is right. Right. Yeah, and, and it, I don't know, this part especially made me really sad, because the mom is really, really sad. They get evicted from their house, but she manages to try to make it cheery for him. She says, how come there's a lock, he said, how come there's a lock on her door? And she says, because it's somebody else's turn to live here. <laughs> It is? Yes. Oh, look, they left our stuff in this bag. <laughs> Wasn't that nice? I guess so. 
And there's something really sad about that, you know? Yeah, it's also really weird. I was like, oh, I guess so. Yeah, they got evicted from their house and uh, somebody Why? took all their stuff. I mean, uh, they don't say. Somebody couldn't pay the rent or, you know. But she's, she's trying to make them feel better about it, you know, by being cheery. And then they leave town forever on a bus, right? And he asks, hey, Mom, yes? Is Dad still going to live with us? Your dad's still living. I don't think so. Oh. Yeah, it's a, it's a really, I don't know. Uh, his dad is evil. If you read some of the other books, you'll figure it out. Like, for example, I think a good one, if you guys want to learn more about how his dad is evil, is Brian Punishment. Dumb name, Roman Punisher. Okay. <laughs> so, Jasper, the series is over. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, I feel like it was short, but actually, that's a long series. Twelve books. Yeah, twelve books. So, there's, and about, most, there's about 200 pages in each and book. And this so is like about, no, actually, it's 200, about, about Actually, all the books are between two, 215 and about two, are about between 215 and 230. So, you've, you've probably spent about 2,500 pages with Dogman. That's wild, huh? Yeah, that is. And you read these yourself, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, when you were starting, because you, you do French language, so you've got two languages going, so you were a little bit delayed with your reading. Mm -hmm. So, when you were starting, we read these out loud to each other, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, now... How, how often would you say you read these? Uh, like, like, five times a day. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's true. About 30 minutes a day, at least. Yeah. I did it once when I woke up, once on the bus going to school, once on the bus coming back to school, or, and then a little bit right before now, and I need to read it again right before bed. All right. That's how it works for me. And w would you say that... Uh, what would you think if, if this was not a comic book, but it was just words? Would you think it'd be the same kind of experience for you? No. Okay, well, what, what about it being a comic book uh, is is helpful to the experience of reading? Uh, lots of the jokes are not really jokes if you cannot see the people's faces. Mm. Also, super villains. Also, super villains. It's nice being able to see the super villains and the characters. Encouraging to keep on reading. Okay, cool. And um, pro pro I think when you were first learning how to read too, it mm -hmm. especially was engaging for you because you could look at their faces and kind of imagine what they were like, and it kind of encouraged you to sound out the words and stuff too, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, if you all had not read any Dog Man, definitely start at book one. Um. But uh, I would say it pretty significantly changes around book three or four. Yeah. Well, as soon as you get to book six, you can. As soon as you read book six, you can basically just read any of the other books. Okay. And then that makes sense. Gotcha. So, like, book one, book three, <coughs> book four, book five, book six, and then you can just read all the rest out of order because those ones don't really matter. They don't really have an order. Okay. And uh, we should probably talk about Cat Kid Comic Club at a later date. But I am all about that one, and it seems like that's really motivated you and your brother to draw comics, would you say? Oh, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. It's a very interesting uh, anthology series that has its own story and everything, but uh, it's a spinoff, and uh, there's about five books of that so far. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Jasper, do you want to say anything to our audience? Uh, I mean, thanks for watching. I love this book. This series is probably the best series I've ever read of any books. See you next episode of whatever we do next. Sounds good. Bye-bye. Sala Nuyalo, Path of the Shades by Clarence Doss is a really cool ongoing project that Living the Line will be producing. Clarence is a PhD student from Fiji who's studying the myths of Fiji for his doctoral thesis. And part of that study project is that he's producing these comics. They're kind of like Hellboy where there's these little short stories that capture all of these different mythologies. But then he's using that to wrap the project into his doctoral thesis, and then provide educational material where people can come to these comics. You know, they don't have to read his PhD thesis, they can come to the comics 
and get a more consumable version of the mythology of Fiji.